Hey, Art3. Well, it's finally your turn. It's your turn to add your touch to the Wolfpack Library. Since sixth grade, you guys have seen the pictures that have been here. You've seen the art that has been in here. And it's your turn to paint your book cover and leave it in the library for years to come. Um, I want to go over a couple of things. I want to talk about a few things um, that may be goods, bads, um, tips and tricks. Um, keep in mind, I've been doing this since, um, actually, I started this at Stafford. And then when I moved over here, I liked the idea so much that I have continued it here. Um, last year was the first year we weren't able to do it. We were supposed to start it right after spring break, and we all know what happened last year. Um, and so I'm excited for you guys to get this going. I cannot wait to see your creativity. Um, I know so many of you guys, I've seen y'all's art, and it's just, I'm, I'm, you guys have no idea how excited I am. But let's talk about a few things first, okay? Okay. Um, first off, some tips and tricks. First off, it has to be a book that's in the Trent Library. Um, it doesn't have to be the exact cover. I'm going to kind of go over this in just a second, but sometimes covers change over time. Um, sometimes they change from a hardback to a uh, paperback, or sometimes they've been around so long that they've had multiple covers. Um, for example, The Hobbit. The Hobbit um, has gone through like five or six different covers over the course of the years. Um, and I'm going to talk about the things that I would and I wouldn't do um, in just a second. So just a thought through that. Uh, number two, if you're doing a series, I always want you to do the first book in the series. I don't want to do book six or seven in the series. This is meant to be a um, push for a series or it's, it might be a book that you really liked, you really loved, things like that. So just kind of keep that in mind. I would real, number three, I'd really like you guys to have read the book that you are doing. Um, the idea is that your passion not only comes out in your art, but your passion for this book. Now, I've had a lot of students do graphic novels in the past. I've had them do uh, picture books. I've had them do manga. Um, I want you to do a cover that shows your strengths. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of situations that have happened. I'm going to show you some really good ones and show you uh, why I thought they were good. I'm going to show you some ones that were a little rough around the edges and talk about why. Um, so let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to go over just a few different things. Now I might repeat myself. I apologize now if I'm repeating myself, but I just want to kind of give you some thoughts. Um, first off, when you choose your book cover, I want you to be the most successful you can be. Simple, complex. I, You know your strengths. You know your strengths if it's um, shading or if it's a certain uh, drawing. Are you better at drawing people? Are you better at drawing animals? Are you better when it's um, a more a, ba a more basic cover? Moving from paper onto a um, canvas with paints can be very hard for some students. And some students, they want to do this really complex book cover when maybe if you've never done something like this before, the, the simpler, the better. Okay. Um, some of the more famous book covers um, are Harry Potter, Great Gatsby, Catcher in the Rye. And you'll notice like the Harry Potter one, I have had a student do this one in the past. And um, it's very complex. Although it looks simple, the details and the little details are what make this cover. Um, I'm going to kind of use my mouse here so you can kind of see. Um, it's the little things, um, the way the bricks are here. The You've got the snitch right here. You've even got the three-headed dog. You've got the unicorn. You've got the detail on his sneakers. And it, sometimes it's interesting that you, I, you don't always see all those little bitty details throughout. Um, the Great Gatsby, on the other hand, um, although it looks at first glance, if you just glance at it, it looks like a solid blue background. You'll notice that there are some interesting lines here that are a part of the design of the book. And although you can probably see that this specific book cover has been worn a little bit, some of these like darker blue lines are actually a part of the um, book cover. And you will see also down here, the detail that's here. Catcher in the Rye, on the other hand, if you just take a glance at that, there's really four colors, very basic colors that are involved in this. But once you go into the lines that need to be drawn, you will notice that it, it's a little bit more complex than what, what you first see. Now, I will say the Great Gatsby Catcher in the Right, we don't have those in the library, but these are just great examples on, you know, what do you think may be so successful? They're, they're very eye-catching. They're very straightforward. And after reading, like I've read Harry Potter, it's been a really long time since I've read the Great Gatsby, but Harry Potter, 
all of those little details actually have to do with the story. And so by you having read Harry Potter and knowing those details and why they're there, it actually helps you make sense of the cover. OK, so let's keep going on this. Oops, sorry, I went too fast. Um, Green Eggs and Ham, Animal Farm, Lord of the Flies are just another three. I have had students do Dr. Seuss books in the past, and I do have a couple here. Um, they're great books to do. Um, since I do have the Dr. Seuss books, they're absolutely fabulous books to do. But I am going to clarify something real quick. Do you guys see this right here? That it's like the, it's almost like a seal. Um, you can buy these, I can read all by myself. It's like a series of books you can buy. This is not something that would need to be on the cover. Anything that's like extra birth, except for the title and the author, all of those things are extra and they are not required. If you have a question about this, feel free to email me or call or um, call me or we can do a Zoom call because I know um, you guys are virtual. But something like this, I would just leave off. I would just paint that area orange because that's not changing the integrity of the cover. Again, Animal Farm and Lord of the Flies, although they're simple, uh, they're, it's, not, it's not necessarily a simple design, but the, the coloring and everything is more simple. Um, the, the tiny details are there. And um, so just keep that in mind when looking at these. Let's keep looking. Dracula, Life of Pi, again, I would not include any of your books that have this right here, something like a little snippet on top or even a award sticker. Those can be left off. Same thing with on Twilight where you've got the, the number one uh, New York Times bestseller by. You could just put Twilight and Stephanie Meyer. Now, something that to think about, I've also had students who do an amazing job on the art of the drawing of the picture, but yet struggle with the font. Keep in mind, you are also doing the font. And so as you're choosing a book, don't get something that you don't feel like you can do that type of font with, okay? Um, now I'm gonna go ahead there, here's just a couple of more. And this is a great example of which book cover would you want, which book cover would make you want to read the book and why. Now, here at Trent, we have this book right here, okay? That's the cover we have. But if, let's say you wanted to do this one instead, you felt like this was a better cover, you are more than welcome to do that. I have To Kill a Mockingbird in the library, but you are not required to stick to the cover that's there. But if you're struggling between multiple covers, let me know what I don't want y'all to do. Please do not do a movie book cover as a painting. Um, I'm thinking of books like Divergent, um, Hunger Games, uh, Harry Potter, all of those. They all have different book covers that are movie book covers with the book inside. They are just, it's not quite what we're looking for. I, would, I don't even buy those for the library. I don't buy books with a movie cover on them because that wasn't the original format. Um, it's it's a one thing if the cover, it's just a different cover based on it being a book. But when we add in the element of the movie, remember, we're wanting to encourage students to read, not necessarily watch the movies. <laughs> okay. Now, these are some examples straight from our library. And I'm going to explain the goods and the bads of each one. Um, remember, I've talked with all of these students. Um, so I'm going to start with Letters to the Lost. This one is actually one of my favorite cov uh, covers. And I didn't do um, uh, in a zoom in on this, you can see the shading is very complex, but what you can't see on the picture is um, it's about a girl whose mother has died and she actually writes letters to her and leaves her, leave them at her grave. And a boy who she goes to school with happens to see her do that and writes her back. He doesn't write her back as a mom, as the mom, but just kind of writes her back as almost an anonymous person. Well, what you can't see on the flower petals is it's like a it's like the letter has been torn up into flower petals. And so there's like writing on each one. And the artist um, who was actually one of my former library aides kept that on her book cover that she drew. And it's just it adds something to it. It's a very beautiful and well done co uh, cover. And again, she played to her strengths. She didn't uh, have to do the most complex. Now, the Gordon Corman one, Ungifted, is very well done. It is a very detailed um, robot. It has lots of little things on it. The one thing I want to remind you guys is sizing. 
Okay. Sometimes when you move something from the book cover over to a, because it's a 16 by 20 canvas, you might need to expand the size. I felt like there was almost too much dead space between the robot and Gordon Corman. It looks disproportioned. It's almost like if he, if the artist would have just made this just a little bit bigger, then it would have been better. And if you need to take liberty with that a little bit, that's fine. If you need to expand that to make it look better in painting, great, do that. Now, Jim Candy was one of the ones that was a little tougher. Um, it is a, when you compare the cover to the um, artwork, it's, I'm not sure they completely match up, but also I want you guys to kind of look at the font. Um, I can tell that the font was painted on after there was no plan for it exactly. Um, you can see that it's not centered the way it is in the book. You can also see that like Carl goes at it, it kind of curves down. And I understand I write all the time on paper that's not lined and my letters do that. But keep in mind when it comes to this, we want to be very careful. Um, keep, I mean, these are up for four to five years. And we want to make sure that when someone looks at it, they see these little details like that or don't see something like that. They're focused on your art versus the, huh, that looks a little off center. Oh, sorry. They keep going too fast for me. Um, the reason I showed you The Hobbit is this is another example of the different covers. Um, I personally have a cover of The Hobbit that is a green cover, and it's um, a picture of Hobbington, and it's um, a little more detailed. But this is another cover that you could do. And again, I don't have a problem if you are looking up online and you decide to change the cover. Um, the fourth stall one is um, something that I think is one of my favorites because although the simplicity is there, you'll notice that most of it, it's just a grid with the wording and then the hand um, and all of that. I love how detailed this was. The font was probably some of the best font that I've seen painted, hand painted, um, and it matches the book so beautifully well. Um, so just keep that in mind. Again, just because you choose something that's on the simpler side to play to your strengths, it still can be so well done that it looks complex. Now, Scythe is one, and I actually took a separate picture of this, and I might show that to you guys in just a second. I want you guys to remember that sometimes these uh, book covers will be a little higher on the wall. They won't necessarily be like at eye level. And so although you might see the mistakes, the mistakes won't always be seen. Um, let me, I'm going to back out of this for just a second and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This is an up close picture of Scythe um, of the lettering and you will see it's not perfect. Okay. Um, I just want, I want to remind you guys that as artists, I know sometimes we have a tendency to be perfectionist, but keep in mind, these are going up on a clock. They're going up. Um, they're on the top part of the wall and sometimes mistakes are okay. You guys can see like there's some gapping here in the paint. You can guys can see that the, um, this isn't the most perfect, uh, paint job, but by when I back away, look you can't even see any of those little details. Um, honestly, what I see is that the H and the E is a little higher. Now, again, guys, I'm not an artist. I struggle, but I, I have that OCD mentality where I see little details like that, where um, I can see changes in like lines and things like that. That doesn't bother me though. And this is, um, if you've read Scythe and you've seen the cover, this is a very well done co uh, cover. And you can see it's got more of the um, the, the edge to it. It's got the... Um, the very simple, straightforward colorings versus having to do much shading. Um, so the one on the left is, uh, again, Twilight. She did not put the author's name, which I really would have liked, but the detail on the hand is what I want you guys to see. Um, the, and the, and the shading on the arms and how well that was done. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're painting, um, on the right hand side is another great form of the shading and how it can be worked. Um, again, when you look at the cover, that is the book beastly is much smaller and it's, um, it's, there's more black space, but by putting it on the canvas, we have adjusted that to make it proportionately correct. And, and it turned out fabulous. OK, um, a, a couple of more ingredients just for successful book cover. Some of this you guys might have already seen. You might have already talked about um, the design must represent your unique art artist style. If you are really good at drawing covers, 
um, or the faces of people, definitely go forth with that. If you're really good at manga, feel free to do the manga book covers. Okay. Again, I would like it to stay the first book in the series. Um, and it needs to be a series that's here, but go towards your strengths. If, if that is your strength, great. If you do uh, better with um, more inanimate objects, focus on a cover like that. Although I would love for you to have read the book, it is, um, it's not necessarily completely required. Again, um, it, the best way for you to do, and I want to remind you how to do um, what to see is in the library. You're going to go to bit.ly slash Trent Checkout. And this is where you're going to go. Okay. You can look at any books that are here. And then from there, you can Google the, um, the different things. If you just want to look, you, you know that you want to do manga but you're not quite sure what, you can just type in manga and see what's here and see what different options you have. Um, but remember, again, I'm going to say this, like I think it's the fourth, or third or fourth time I've said it, please stick to book one, even of a manga series. Um, but you guys can look through it that way. If you know you want to do fantasy, you can do it there. And then you can look at it through here. If you want to do sports, type in sports and you can look at the different book covers in that list. You can also go with a flow and you can see like groups of them together. So you can um, pull them through like that. OK, so that's some ideas for you. Please, please, please feel free to email me um, and let me know if you're struggling with something to pick. And you and I can maybe uh, jump on a Zoom call together and we can talk through some things. And of course, I would love to see y'all's faces, too. So if you need, need any help, feel free to talk to me and I cannot wait to see your art.